Welcome back to the newsroom. We are on day three of our job. Because I really need to find out what happens at the end. I'm really, really curious. And for the record, this is not sponsored anymore, so I'm really just playing this because I want to now. Day three, an unexpected form. That's right, after the broadcast levels, there are these text sections, but I'm pretty sure this whole graphic here is new, right? Because the last time when I played it, it was like, um, it was a screen on a TV, that's it. But now we have, um, an actual thing. Anyway, you arrive home to find posts on the mat, most being nothing more than the usual junk mail. One letter, however, catches your eye. The team wants to know you. Curiosity gets the better of you, and you open it. It's a form from the new advanced government, asking for information on all citizens. Wow, efficiency. The first page is filled in already. Your name, Alex Winston. Your spouse, Sam Winston. Your children, Charles and Susie, 14 and 19. Yeah, and they, they're kind of careful to use, uh, what do you call it? Gender neutral name. So, I mean, you could, you could role play as being Alex, the hardworking husband or Alex, the career businesswoman. It doesn't really matter. Well, you muse, at least they got the basics right. The rest of the questions are left for you to complete. They appear to be mandatory. Ooh. Question one. Upon starting a new job, you would... Really? I, I'm uh, I'm Evil Wellens right now. Should I be me or should I be Evil Wellens? <laughs> well, okay. Evil Wellens cares about her family. She might not care about the government or the general state of the world. Like, the nation can burn, but I care about getting paid. So... I'll be friendly and introduce myself to my new co-workers. Question 2. A colleague in a different department has confided in you that they've been taking home confidential information. Now, a file of minor importance has gone missing. You would... Oh god, I don't want any of these, because helping cover up is like, you know, that's... I've got starving kids at home, okay? <laughs> I don't want to risk my job. Recommend that your colleague repeat reports it. Mm. I don't want to get involved. Like I just want to pretend to look away. Like I don't. I don't want to promise to not tell anybody. I just want to look away entirely. <laughs> okay, so maybe I'll recommend that my colleague reports it. By the way, I am broke as poor. You know, as we didn't know this already. Yeah. Okay. Question three: An entire department was fired today for consistent underperformance. Your boss has put in place new targets that are significantly higher than the previous ones. You would... Leave work on time? <laughs> Probably not. Stay late to ensure you hit the first deadline. Leave work early and head to the pub to chat about changes with colleagues. Leave work early and head home to see your family. Family is important, but... Mm, probably stay late to make sure we at least do the first one, right? Yeah, at least make it look good. Question 4. It's the annual company barbecue, and you and your family have been invited. You... Company barbecue? Sounds like a trap. Are looking forward to enjoying a nice day out? Are washing your hair that day? Go if you're free, but wouldn't mind missing it? Have been practicing with your co-workers and think you'll win the talent contest this year. <laughs> Go if you're free, but wouldn't mind missing it. Question 5. You've had a long, successful career and are now about to retire. In your speech, you... <laughs> refuse to attend. Um, hmm. This seems kind of negative, focusing on the issues and challenges. Uh, I want to talk about the good memories, but I don't really want to talk about the achievements. <laughs> but I'll choose this one, sure. I'll list my achievements and all the good memories I have of working there. Question 6. In your spare time, you... Hmm. Okay, I I love my family. We might be poor, but what we have is love, and that makes up for all the deficiencies in our family. I encourage and support my children with their hobbies. Question 7. Your ideal holiday getaway would be surrounded by natural beauty, getting away from the strain of daily of the daily grind, exploring somewhere unfamiliar and discovering new experiences and challenges, a structured day at a theme park or a romantic getaway with your partner to a tropical island paradise. No kids involved. <laughs> yeah, may maybe a romantic getaway is fine. Just, uh, chill out a little bit. Question 8. It's most important that the government keeps people... 
Okay, so what we know of advance is that they seem... Okay, they were talking about like tax reforms and eating or uh, taxing the rich. Uh, let's keep people free. Thank you for your cooperation. Advance knows your time is valuable, and we appreciate your help in leading the nation to a brighter future. Okay, thank you. Man, they're efficient. Sending out these forms on the third day of the government. Day six, a family matter. I don't remember what choices I made before, so I'm just gonna do it all over again. <sighs> it's late. Sam and the kids have gone to bed. You're just drawing up a favorite coffee cup, a worn out souvenir of your first trip together. The prince faded, but the goofy face still makes you smile. A knock at the window brings you back to reality. There in the garden, clutching a gaudy neon green suitcase, is Chris, Sam's sibling. As soon as you let them in, they sit at the kitchen table, visibly stressed. Chris takes a deep breath. <laughs> what is this cup? <laughs> I'm so sorry for bursting in so late, Alex. Chris stammers, but I need a favor and you're the only one I can ask. Again, Chris, a gender neutral name here. Mm. Um, mm. Well, Chris says I'm the only person and not even, not even my, my husband or wife. <sighs> Let's try it anyway. Are you okay? Should I go get Sam? N no, no need to worry, Sam. It's you I came to see. I just need two minutes. You've heard about the Assets and Wealth Act? I literally work in news, Chris. Chris's fist bangs the table. It's total bullshit! They're taking whatever they want and distributing it as they see fit. No government should have that kind of power. I can't believe they're actually getting away with it. Madness! Which is why I need your help. What exactly is it you need? Chris's eyes seem to be resting comfortably on the floor tiles. Look, I know it's a lot to ask, but I need to borrow your passport. N no, no, I don't, I don't even know you that well. You never visited me after we got married. Okay, after Sam and I moved out, you never visited. Mm, my passport? What for? They've taken mine and half the bloody country's... Oh, they've taken mine and half the bloody countries, but people always say you and I look similar, so... Ah, that was the thing they mentioned in their speech on day one. They actually did it! Oh my god. Chris is pacing now. I need to leave before it's too late. Once I'm out, me and my money will be safe. But I need to go now before they freeze my accounts. Please, Alex. I wouldn't ask if I had any other choice. No, I... When did you ever help me? You know, when when me and Sam were busy being broke-ass poor, when did you ever help me? I don't see you help- wait, but maybe you'll help me now. Is that what you're saying? Because you apparently have a lot of money here. It doesn't say a lot, actually. It just says money. <laughs> well, I don't know, though, because I love my family and my family loves me, so I don't wanna... I don't really wanna put myself at risk. Surely there's another way. It can't be that serious. Chris's mouth falls open. You're joking, right? I've always done right by you and Sam. I've treated your children like they were my own. We're family. Does that mean nothing to you? <sighs> family. They took out the... Chris busted out the magic word. Uh, okay, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, I'll go get the passport. Family's family. You climb the stairs to your bedroom, careful not to wake Sam, who is cocooned in the duvet as usual. You open the wardrobe, unlock the safe, and retrieve the passport. A sleepy voice breaks the silence. Mm, Alex, what's going on? I think we should tell. If we're gonna do it, we should be on the same page. And then maybe... Maybe Sam's gonna be like, oh no, my sibling Chris is actually horrible and this is a bad idea, and then I'll just be like, okay, never mind. <laughs> Chris is downstairs. They're leaving the country and they need my passport to do it. Sam sits bolt upright now, all thoughts of sleep gone. What? They're leaving the country? Are things really that bad? 
Yeah, according to Chris, but I'm not so sure. I don't know if I really want to give up my passport. This must be tearing Sam apart. Their family has always been close. You know what I would do, Sam says, finally. But it's not my passport. I can't ask you to give it up. Okay. Okay. Okay, at least we're on the same page. Fine. <sighs> You're right, I'll do it. Family comes first. I'll be back up in a minute. Wait, but Sam and Chris... Okay, so I guess this is assuming that Sam and Chris are the opposite genders then. Because they're related. You're telling me that I look more related to Chris than Sam looks to Chris? Yeah, okay, fine, fine. You close the safe and head back downstairs to find Chris at the table fidgeting. They jump up as soon as you re-enter the kitchen. So? Have you got it? Yes, here. Good luck with everything. For the first time, Chris smiles. It's infectious. Thanks, I really appreciate this. I'll get back in touch once I'm safely out of the country. Chris takes the passport and, breathing a sigh of relief, grabs a nylon fluorescent suitcase and heads out into the night. You head to bed, hoping you can prize some of the duvet away from Sam without waking them. I feel like... Like, part of me really wants to... Um, I just want to go all in and do all the crazy choices. Is that cool? Like, I don't want to do the choices that logically make sense. I just want to do all the bad things and see what happens at the end. <laughs> Day 8, the fallout. We've been at this for about a week now. Oh no, there's something new here. He's having fun. <laughs> let's get set up and get on with it, eh? So I can get back to my guests. First of all, let's get the power on. Probably got a little bit more comfortable with this now. It's been a week. Come on, mate. On your left. The plugs and stuff. <laughs> if you look at this, there's actually a lot going on here. A water balloon with a face drawn on it. You need to get at least the bottom four plugs on. Okay. Oh, there's a... Wait. Last time you flipped it on for me. You know, if we don't need that, let's turn it off. It's kind of noisy. You might want to have a bit of a think about it. Your decisions have consequences, don't they? Should we play? Is this toy safe? Oh. Mr. Snuggle Hugs. Remington Zvist's must-have toy for your child this Christmas. Okay, let's put it in. <laughs> we should check out all of them first, then. We shouldn't just look at the top three. Should be played, introducing Advance's Go-Getters teen team. Alright. Wait. Juice de Cachon. <laughs> An elegant new skin cream with a porky little twist. Porky. Alan James is coming to a medium-sized hall near you. Some kind of talker. Crazy Neil again. Festive Yuletide Ornament Spectacular. Okay, so... Uh, Crazy Neil, does anybody want to pay me? Do we have time? Oh my god. Help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here, or image B on the right bottom screen here. It's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Provided you make a decision in that time, you're fine. And you can change your mind as much as you want until the clock reaches zero. But if you don't make any decision, you'll be fired before you even get to make another choice. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them, and that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts, choose carefully. Whoa, and we're 
Okay, okay, uh, I didn't understand anything, but sure. Does this challenge you think dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Not the best source of consumer advice, then. What's wrong with the moon? explodes going in five, four, three. It's time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's national... Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this charge. Tonight, I'll be discussing uh, what the hold with a leading economist and radical... A little happier there. With the Assets and Wealth Act on the brink of raising living standards for the vast majority of the country, I'll be asking my guests if we're on the way to a new future. If we're on the way... Out with the old... Remington Fisk have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. <laughs> the following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington... Or we can make her look like a laughing stock. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honours, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favourably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehouse. <gasps> Sophia promised the ad. To be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety, making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensford have today <laughs> set off with Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. Many were surprised that the two scientists, who shared a fractious rivalry for many years, decided to undertake this expedition in each other's company. However, the two have released a joint statement in which they opine geniuses don't have to like each other to achieve remarkable results. Absolutely. Playing the field. Oh, this is stressful. The sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. <laughs> the footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very program. <laughs> and judging from the angle and velocity of that spray, it looks like Johnny may have been celebrating a little bit too much. I certainly wouldn't want to be his dry cleaner. And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country. I talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. Oh God! With more and more people saying they're scared to walk the streets alone at night. Could this be exactly the right time for Advance's new approach? All that. I'm going all in. For the group of young actors, oh, it closed. Experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Oh, what? What? Oh, God. Forgot how to do it for a second. I am so stressed. I don't know what's happening. I, uh, I guess I'm pro-advanced for now. I don't know. My boss probably wants me to be pro-advanced. On the tape for the advanced thing, it said, should be played. Kind of want to see what they can do anyway. government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves, we're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Advance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd, 
ignorant, sterile, and short-lived. It was one of the want. tapes. Or perhaps Advance have just realized that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colorful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is shamelessly self-promoting. <laughs> how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last great war. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! But what this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like oh, God. <laughs> but based on the facts, Katie, what are your positions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the un or, as I call them in my book, Franken science and opi arts. Franken science and opi arts. Like opiates. See. Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This Can is the issue. Hand, it's all coming from the water, the chemicals. They're pumping it full of belief. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you, Alan? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomized into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. One minute back. You know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Jeremy. We'll How look at the behind the scenes like stuff during the, the break. We're here to help. The new Advance Go Getters initiative oh God. will ensure that every young person enjoys the abundance of benefits that only a true community can provide, while keeping us informed of all the ups and downs. To help you. See ya, see ya. There's a lot going on here, and uh, that debate, I definitely want to review it. There's nothing better than moving forwards. The advanced go get Forwards. That was an advanced ad. Welcome back. In our second segment, Welcome we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance of a ruddy country. Oh, sorry, I, I thought move this I thought the audio kept to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to make the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Can yes, you? I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yes. Sorry about the What's blip. What's like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. We need more support from ministers. We, uh, what are you doing? 
Oh, we need change. She's and leaving. A structural level, Jeremy. I'm leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? Time, darling. I'll be at my mother's. It never is, is it? Just hang on. Just hang on. Oh, the, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about. Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Judge. Hello, Mr. We need. Uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public. Sorry sovereign. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving? Oh my God. Yes, I totally understand. Yes. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there, Gregory Judge. Thank you for joining us, Gregory Judge. Thank you for joining us. This Chief Constable Bob Peel. We gotta watch this later. A very different perspective <laughs> on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Do you think there's a problem? I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife or cosh. So you feel the streets are safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. Lord. To what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies, mainly. It's all in the Bible, isn't it? Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, oh God. Hang on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimps escaped. Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please? Please, dear. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. Oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh, in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Thank you, good. Back in your game space. Oh, my you God. Know, Change, Bob. Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people. Darling, where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Clive, this simply won't do. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Oh! Mummy said. Clive, I am not having this again. We can't show this. But people want to see it. As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Oh, great. Bob Peel there. We're locking down the police's position on morality for us. And finally tonight, Hopefully uninterrupted. Tonight, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. <laughs> Tony Wait, he's not wearing pants. Released from prison after serving three <laughs> years for aggravated assault, <laughs> burglary, <laughs> and menacing a swap. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Which is also, I believe, many happy returns, Tony. Many happy Cheers, returns, Jez. Tony. Call me Titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Can you tell Titwank, us Tony. Hey! Prison's a mixed bag. The structure's quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up the name alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. Shut up! Yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. Okay, well, we're trying that you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? To rehabilitate you in any way. Tit wank Tony! I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. Soapen! I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris. Little Chris. And Vampire Chris. How many Chris's do you have? This one's, yeah? Yep. One sec, love. Tip when you on the news. One sec, love. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this guy? You are joking. Chrissy Freebollock has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. Not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It's so... It 
It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. A little boy. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus. Yes, we uh, Jesus. seem to be losing the signal no here, Tony. No fucking way. <laughs> Let's believe that. Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. Well, I think we... <laughs> yes, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> and thought though a little. Hopefully you, the viewer at home, have managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. Very complex. Megan will be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. Oh my God. Piss. Oh no! You can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't know, you won't get punished for it or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip: when the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love music. God, I'm so pissed. I think I might go and throw up in a bit. I remember not knowing how to do this. I think the interference really screwed me over. The ad was a little bit late this time. Wait, why is there no one? Going in five, four, three. Welcome to Black, I'm Megan Wolf, and on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College, who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey, Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two. And the memories are vaguely coming back. Stanley Dash Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. And I believe you two are sisters. Is that right? And yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, yes, more Charlotte's popular one. I'm the older, more <laughs> popular one. The Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria and I said, hey, let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths teacher. Maths is really important. Algebra. Oh, thanks, Steve. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. As is theatre. It's one of the oldest art forms in history, Aristotle. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. We touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. Angela Algebra. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? That's right. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like... <laughs> All of us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Put it in, coach. Yes, thanks, Steve. Right. Well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. That's it. That way. Good Lord. So, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grant? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. How? How did you react? I also threw it in the bin. But then Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page, and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny, because Angela and I don't usually vote. We we're not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic, mainly. 
<laughs> we did used to watch that Peter Clements <laughs> DIY we show back in the day. Clemens and so we thought, uh, why not? So let's have a go with this old uh, democracy thing. OK. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. So let's have a look at a short section so, of Hey, at a short friendship. Of hey, friendship. Oh. OK, broadcast volume down. Dear Diary, I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. Fears. But still I walk the corridors alone. 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 Dreading what might be around every corner. <laughs> What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi Gary. Oh, heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Gary, Gary the, the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year? Great! I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject. And so important. Um. Maths is for losers. What? Matt is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Just keep going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right, uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? Oh, my arm's free, coach. Brilliant, keep going. <laughs> right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I'm Gary the Fist, and you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who <gasps> live alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, I can't fight all three of you, and I don't have any friends of my own. Take a look at me, take a little look at my face, I could be you, she could be you, and you could be me, or oh, you could be me, I can be be cheeky. to be main so, so stop, stop now. now make a different choice I have no idea what I'm doing hey listen up I won't take no crap who said middle class girls can't rap I ain't afraid of your cool cool nuts I'm a mother loving rebel but I still love that Kids, I'm Gary the Fist. People think the folks like me probably shouldn't exist. But that's just prejudice, and I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary, Gary the Fist. Fist. I grew up on a council estate. The park was hip, but the flats weren't great. My dad used to come home drunk and late, and he'd hit my mum for dinner. He had to wait. Oh, God. That's my dinner. Women is wrong. I guess life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 It's so damn hard on a council estate. Life can be cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you work as a team, just work as a team. It's your choice to 
I didn't really get it. Some parts were obvious, but not all of it. Well, thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the <laughs> National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Donaldson. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> I was late on the commercial again. I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. <laughs> I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Oh, that's the, the toy. Oh, someone please get these twats out of my studio. Oh my god. Yeah, the music thing. I remember having trouble with it before, but you can generally tell if a screen is suitable if it has a green light here. Orange means reaction shot, I think. So red is just wrong, but orange is okay from time to time. And I think you need orange to make it a good one, too. Uh, oh, we're complete, we're complete. But, um, no, we can't. I guess we'll just watch it in the archives. Ooh! Oh, that D is painful. Oh, no. All offensive words were censored. All interference- Oh, interference free show, really? An exceedingly poor edit? You played one advert too late. Oh, Damn it, at least, you know, it's a, uh, you know what they call this? It's a shit sandwich. The crappy stuff is in the middle, but we ended off okay, so it's fine. Yikes. Was it really that bad, the editing? What? I thought it was the interference that got me, actually, but maybe it was because I was focusing so much on the interference, I wasn't changing the cameras at all. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, my, my broken mouse and the, the interference doesn't really work that well, but okay. I got my full wages! Current wealth broke ass poor, but started from the bottom and growing up. Some companies are going up, some are going down, but still none of my problem. I'm not really I don't have any shares in any of them. People's perception of advance is going up because I played the advanced commercial, and even in the beginning when we were choosing the A and B, I chose the the picture of them being happy and you know, the non-authoritarian looking photo and all that. I think my boss is happy with me. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, should we watch the broadcast? Oh, I don't... Hmm. Let's watch some rushes, maybe. No, for my sister's kid, Mr. Fuckle Tugs or something. Snuggle hugs? That's the best. <coughs> yeah, I wouldn't get one of those. My friend Janet says theirs gets really hot. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody! Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes, going in five. And we play four, the ad at the end. Three. Oh, that's it. That's it for this section. In this interview, we had, uh, what was the other lady's name? Katie, I think? And then Alan James was here to sell his book, basically. And he's all like, no, to advance, but like, also way into the whole, just, the water is poisonous and whatever else. And then Katie's like, well, you know, maybe, maybe it's good. She mentioned something about how the wealth and whatever that act was called, the act that caused my brother-in-law, my, my uh, spouse-in-law, spouse-in-law, <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris to move out of the country. Yeah, so that act is basically saying we're taking money from all the rich people to redistribute across the country so that everyone would be out of poverty. I think that's the point. And we basically helped Chris escape it because <laughs> he's family. He or she is family. So, well, I mean, I got to take care of my own, okay? <laughs> that's what we got to do here. Let's really quickly go through the interview again, because I didn't really hear everything. All that, a mega move for the group of young actors already experiencing the positive side of the new asset. Now performing Hold on. Everybody, can we get the gets in quickly, please? We actually had to make the book indestructible because people tried to set it on fire too much. It's like Thanks for coming on. Oh, gee, I wonder why. But, oh, uh, Alan James, no doubt you've read my stuff. I try not to, if I'm honest. Be <laughs> You're not the boss of me. I literally um. <laughs> Ten seconds, everybody. I like Jeremy. He's a chill guy. We're going in five, four, 
three, two. This game is uh, it's a pretty British game, but I think some there are certain characters and events that make it like it's a really obvious reference to I guess stuff that happens in real life, or maybe all dystopias sort of look like this, which is kind of a depressing thought. <laughs> in the wake of the government's swift enactment. <laughs> Free man's guy to waking up. Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Anti advance. Do you agree? I'm afraid. So we played, uh, did we play the Alan James commercial? I think we did, right? Alan James and Advance, huh. I don't know. I think that Advance have realized that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, no? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile, and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance has just realized that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet. It is mad orgy of consumption. If it exceeds the kind of people. Yes, orgy is the right word. This lady is pro-advance. since the last great war. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't And this I... will not be a war like we've <laughs> ever seen before. Just took one word she said and ran away with it. Four. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're oh my. Out of the wrong orifices. Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno brainwashing, who will be laughing then? That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Uh, we don't know who was in power before Advance came in, but they, they came in and they were like, we are gonna tax the rich, we are gonna... We're coming for you, and we're gonna make the world right again. And then Alan James is like, no, these people are equally bad, slaves to a different master. But Katie's like, well, you know, maybe, maybe it's, it, it's not Democracy so bad. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening. But the truth is that the Wealth, Wealth and Assets, Assets Act. Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! But what this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the case. So everybody was voting. Huh. This sort of thing, like you redistribute the the wealth. I'm not an economist or anything, but if you redistribute it like that, short term, okay, everyone's less poor, but then what's gonna happen in the long term? Who's gonna wanna work hard if their money's just gonna get taken away? I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation. Okay, that's that's a good thing. They have money and they're funding public services. They're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken science and opiates. Like opiates, see? <laughs> Belief juice. Lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure. That could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're a place where we've all been figuratively sodomized into submission. No, oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different She's more reasonable sounding. There. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Megan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight. Oh! Oh, no, no, the beneficiaries were the, the Hey Friendship people, the, the math group. On the National Nightly News. <laughs> One minute back! It's actually amazing how they make this coherent narrative about the changes that the government is causing across this nation while making it like like what the actual hell am i even watching <laughs> you know i think they might do some good i hope so too jeremy how much are you being paid by them then shut the fuck up alan i've never heard so much shit in my life <laughs> well we'll see who's full of shit won't we <laughs> alan i can explain it to you but unfortunately i can't understand it for you <laughs> well i don't know what she meant by that <laughs> Yeah, Katie. Katie is more optimistic. And then Jeremy did not in the in day one. He did not like the government, but he's hopeful. He's hopeful. Now the interviews. 
I'm just saying I'll do what I can, that's all. Bullshit you will. She's good, you know she is. I've said I've got a word in, that's all I can do. Gregory seconds, Judge. Robert Peel. If that sticks, I'll destroy you. Five, four, three. <laughs> Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advanced solutions team. 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 Solutions team.
a police chief, and the guy actually in prison. Imagine, and obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. Hey! Yeah, sorry, my friends. Your friend is a party. Oh Come my god. <laughs> Rehabilitate you in any way, Tony. Titwank, Tony. Hooray! I don't think it's a video that you guys. Sorry, bye. I think asking that is a lot of simplification. So you're not going to tell us anything about your time? No, your job. Your job. Okay, it's all bullshit. He didn't say anything useful. So, do you feel tempted to... He just wants to be on the news. You are joking. Chrissy Freebollocks has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. I'm on the news. It seems, it seems like we've caught you at a bad time. The little boy. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus. Yes, we have. Uh, seems to be oh, there was some. No oh. Oh, we actually well, lost the signal. Let's get that signal back. I think we. Yes, Tony. <laughs> Lost our train of thought there a little. Hopefully, you, the viewer at home, have managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around you. After the break, let me be live with some fucking old questions. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. He's holding it very well. Well, piss off. Smooth, incisive journalism. I can have you fired. You'd miss my charm. I love these two. They have such a good rapport. Okay, I didn't get how the music thing worked at all, but um... Yeah. Well, where is he? In his dressing room, probably banging his head against the wall. Look, it's alright, I've got this. Jeremy. I'm sure he's on his way. Come on, it's welcome back. How hard can it be? This is on you. Ten seconds, everybody. We're gonna open on <clears throat> Megan, camera two. Going in five, four, three... Welcomes Black. I'm Megan Wolf. And on tonight's cult <laughs> culture spot. First beneficiaries of the. So these people were poor. They were poor, but then wealth got redistributed, and now they have enough money to be going around the country performing their little oh, shows. Right. A team of in. Yeah. We take the play to secondary schools. <laughs> the drama teacher got laid off due to budget cuts. This is a public school, right? I'm assuming you guys come from a public school. So why, why did the drama teacher get laid off if the wealth is being redistributed? Oh my god. And then they got the math teacher to take her place. This university, so. <laughs> All the problem schools and the poor kids. Oh shit, there's, there's anything going on here? No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, okay, we've seen this, we've seen this. Now they get ready over here. So, Jeff, yes. when did you first hear about the grant? Uh, two days ago. A letter from a grant arrived at the school. Now, the two days ago? That, that's really... To be fair, they're very productive and fast. I thought it was all a prank, but his... Secretary retreated from his bin and brought it to me. Oh, how did you react? I also threw it in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> The people who don't vote are usually people who are who benefit from the status quo. They don't see anything that's too wrong with what's happening currently, right? So, but hey, he managed to benefit from it. Chip. He and his whole little troop. This was fun to change the camera feeds for because it's like an actual show. Dear Di. Hello, Jeff. 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 Hello,
Okay, but we don't need to see this again, though. Was alone. Alone. Dreading what might be around every corner. Oh my god. Okay, we saw the whole thing already. I turned down the, the volume earlier. But I wonder if there's anything at the end of this. Hey, friendship. We gotta work together and love math. <laughs> Jeremy! <laughs> I love Jeremy. Oh, but he's not saying anything. He's just really. He's like, it's just the paycheck. Uh, I'm gonna get ready for tomorrow. <sighs> Tomorrow's a new day. Thankfully, that's all we have. What the literal fuck was that? <laughs> I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Friendship! Oh, oh someone please get these twats out of my studio. Here, here, no one's getting paid well enough for this. But we, we try to make it through. We try to make it through. Which ones? Yeah, let Mr. Snuggle Hugs. There might be a problem with the toys. Oh my god, where did they get a bunch of kids for this? Ew! What is this? It's got four arms! What the hell? <laughs> it's no wonder Mr. Snuggle Hugs is the gift your child wants this Christmas. All the other kids have got one. That's right, little one. You don't want to be left out. I only like people who have me as their friend. Oh, Mr. Snuggle Hugs, you're so silly. Wait, 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 wait. What does it say at the bottom there? Mr. Snuggle Hugs is made overseas by Remington's Vist Incorporated and not guaranteed. Uh, not guaranteed to not explode or something. I can't see it. In your territory. Can we get rid of the subtitle? To conform to safety standards? In your territory. Oh my god. In stores now, selling out fast. Real action eyes. Well, we'll see if it breaks down. <laughs> uh, Alan James. Alan James. James. Alan James is right. Alan James is right. I'm Alan James. Alan James. Okay, okay, is I'm. I... Right. You should be scared. There must be something in the food! I'm oh. upset you, but you should weep for the world. They're gonna take your poor sweet grandma. And I don't mean to shock you, but. You need to wake up! James, and I'll slap you so hard with the truth, you'll still be picking facts out of your face the following Wednesday. Alan James, coming to a city near you. Check local press for dates and times. That looked like some, looked like a poster for a rapper's concert tour or something. Uh, I don't know, man. He seemed kind of. I don't know. If, I don't think it was a good thing that we played that. Did we play it? Oh no, I think we might have played this one, right? Just the Kachan. Maybe we can watch all of them since we only we broadcast three, but there's five. Why bother strengthening your body, body. when you can strengthen your face? face. <laughs> we believe your skin deserves the best. Oh, it's so a the new formula actively removes harsh chemicals from your skin. The Cosmetics. High salt content actually pulls the dihydrogen monoxide right from your pores. The dihydrogen monoxide. <laughs> To give you the crisp, brittle skin you've come to expect. New brittle? Judicochon will revitalize the appearance of, the strength of your face's skin. Forty okay, someone please tell me what Judicochon means. I bet it's something. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna look it up right now. This is French, right? Let's see. Judicochon. 
French detected pig juice. Okay. One percent of women we surveyed said they loved their visible plates, and seven out of ten dentists would recommend it. Pig juice. <laughs> Because we said so. This game would be nowhere near as fun if these videos weren't so fantastic. Whoever's directing and thinking of all these ideas, this is fantastic. We didn't. I think we did this one, not Alan and James. Yeah, so the only one that we did politically was the advanced one. And then playing this one, well, we'll see what happens, right? We're leaning into the whole screwing everything up angle. Because I want to be rich. Oh my god. Your Christmas tree was pink. We want to give you a spectacular Christmas cactus. You know what it's like? You've run out of things to dress up and you want your health to look like a Christmas bomb has hit it? Then we got the ornaments for you. You want something like vases or... Oh my god. Oh, I, I thought Crazy Neil only sold chairs, but no, they they are in with the trends. That's good. Okay, now this is an important one. Advance. Go getters. Our children are our future. Advance knows this, and we're here to help. The new Advance Go Getters initiative will ensure that every young person enjoys the abundance of benefits that only a true community can provide while keeping us informed of all the ups and downs to help make things even better. With a vast range of activities available, building the nation's future has never been so rewarding. With the Go-Getters, you can be sure that your children will be well equipped in the march towards progress. After mm. all, there's nothing better than moving forwards. The advanced Go-Getters. Forwards. Together. Well, they certainly... They make everything look like it's in a very good light. I guess we'll just have to see what happens, huh? Ho hopefully we're slowly climbing our way out of poverty. That's really my one wish and goal here. But now you start to see it, sir. The people never happy. They're never enough. I cannot believe you, you know. 